favor of the Grizzlies as Cohen Wilbanks will step to the plate. But Matt, we have a very, very special guest joining us. And we have Mr. Robbie Gutierrez joining us live via Zoom into the Grizzly Digital Network. Robbie, how are you today? You know what? I'm I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm I'm excited to be here and, and excited that I could be on the broadcast with y'all and, and you know, first and foremost, thank you for inviting me. I wish I could be in Lawrenceville today for, for all of this and and really wish that I could I could join y'all. Uh, unfortunately, you know, American Airlines had other plans and <laughs> ideas and, and uh, you know, the weather, uh, I'm not going to fully blame them. The, the weather in, in North and Central Texas didn't cooperate with uh, our, our beautiful weather in South Texas. I say that as we had hail yesterday. So I'm, I'm just happy to be here, guys. I, th I thought windy and chilly was tough for us to get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit cold in Lawrenceville for us, but... <laughs> Robbie, we're, uh, it's been our honor and our pleasure to recognize Cody Butler. I'm sure you've been dialed in all day. Um, he, he, was, he was more than just your co-host. He was uh, your friend, your brother. You've talked about it multiple times on the podcast. When, when you've been watching, I know as painful as it's been from afar, but what have you taken away from the impact of, of all of our guests today? You know, Cody has, has impacted so many lives and what he's done for this level and, and really – there's never going to be enough recognition for what he's created. There, there will never be enough recognition for what he's created and the work that he's done. This level of baseball owes him a lot um, for, for that. And I think the coaches, a lot of the parents, players that we've developed relationships with, they realize that and the impact that he's had. I mean, you know, I was thinking about it last night going into today and the impact he's had on my life as, as a whole. Uh, you know, while Cody was was here, I, I still feel him with me in so many senses of the word. But I think about even into the next life, he continues to impact my life. The the relationship that I've built with his family, and and uh, the the good that's come out of that. You know, I was I used to send Cody pictures of of uh, Layla, and and photos of her and and thing. You know, when she would play t-ball and things like that, I was sending his mom photos of Layla yesterday. You know. Uh, talking about about the girls and, and Jackie and Layla and, and just continuing to uh, as I build my family gaining family members from Cody's family and being able to have them become part of my family and so Osaban reaches there on an infield single that pulls Demasi off the bag it's one out in the inning as McGuire will turn the lineup back over as he's the leadoff hitter so, Robbie, I mean, for people that maybe don't know the background story of forming the podcast with, uh, with Cody, I mean, how did that formation work? Of course, you guys shoot into the top 100 of sports podcasts in the United States, and, and give us a little bit of background on that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's kind of the same way I met Matt. Um, <laughs> Kaiser was, was out there, and uh, I, I think uh, GGC that day, was the GDN was not as massive as it is now. <laughs> And um, they needed somebody to, uh, you know, help them with the broadcast. I was available uh, from Kaiser to, to do that. And I stepped into the role. I, I tried to be as uh, partial as, as possible uh, that day. And, and I went ahead and, and met Cody and, and uh, we got to talking. You know, we had talked on, online quite a bit. And, you know, that relationship kicked off that way it, with, with a trip to GGC. And the next thing you know, the next year we were hosting a, a podcast. You know, it's funny, I think back to that meeting. You, you mentioned it a couple times in a podcast when Kaiser came up here uh, f for the opening round. And I remember having talked through our professional relationship for covering Kaiser and then had my personal relationship with Cody. And honestly, all I thought about was like, man, these two dudes would get along. That's the, that's the only thought process I ever had. So I was like, hey, Robbie, Cody, Cody, Robbie. I didn't think anything of it other than the fact that like, we share that common bond of interest of, of having not only played NAI baseball, but we just love the sport. I mean, we're sitting up here on a Saturday in April we're watching two baseball games, and we wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And so uh, I, I, I appreciate the, 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 the recognition. I want no credit whatsoever <laughs> for what you guys have built because not even in my wildest dreams did I even imagine that you guys could put together what you've built. It's, it's absolutely incredible, Robbie. It, it has been it's it's been incredible when I when I think back to it you know I think about those first couple shows and I rem remember he wanted uh, to, to remain anonymous yeah I remember first, that in, in the first season he didn't want 
He, what, he Cody Man he, 10? That's what he wanted to be called, like Cody <laughs> Man 10. Yeah, he, he was crazy. He went back and forth. I called him, you know, Mr. NAI Ball, Cody <laughs> Man, you know. Yep. Those, so those first those first couple of, of episodes, you know, it, that we were still building and working on the chemistry. And, and I think back to those first couple episodes, and and then I think about what it was in years four and five where, where the chemistry was just so solid you know, we didn't have to work on, oh, okay, I'm going to stop talking now, you know, and, and really, I think the podcast helped him uh, outward project more, especially with his voice, because he was so talented. You know, I, I remember Brad uh, earlier today talking about just how much he was able to, to do with stat scores, information news, and he was at the forefront of all of that. So he was, he was just fantastic at all of that. And so McGuire battling here, 2-2 two -two count. As O'Saban ends up on second. So McGuire turning the lineup back over here with one out in the inning. Ty Cook on the mound. Checks O'Saban as he fakes towards third. This one's a liner in the left field. It falls. O'Saban's going to round third. He's heading towards home. Throw comes in. Is it in in time? Yes, O'Saban's out at the plate. McGuire advances to second. But the Grizzlies get out again being aggressive on the bases, and it remains just one nothing. Aggressive is one thing, Patrick, but it's they're a step late in their decision-making process. And so O'Saban did a good job of reading that ball in the outfield, but once it, he, he was just a step too late in reacting and trying to turn the corner to get around third, Norton's on the wrong foot over at first. And so the, the Grizzlies, it's the aggressiveness is always going to be there for Jeremy Schiedinger team. It's just they're a, a hair late in their decision-making process. And three outs have been recorded on the base path for George Winnett here in just the bottom of the third. And all credit does go to Germany there in left field. An absolute dime of a throw to the plate. But nonetheless, swap positions as McGuire ends up on second and Kyle Norton now comes to the plate as he'll take for a strike down in the zone. Again, we got Robbie Gutierrez on the uh, GDN hotline here uh, live from McAllen, Texas. Uh, Robbie, you know what's hit me like a ton of bricks today? is you, we've talked to Billy Berry, we've talked to Brad Neffendorf, we've talked to Adrian Dinkel, Brad Stromdahl, Jeremy Schiedinger, uh, Cam Corsi was up here too as well earlier, Jonathan Leatherman, Connor Del Nell, just uh, previously to you, and then obviously you have probably communicated with Cody the most, and everyone is blown away by how deep of a connection that Cody has had with these individuals and how frequently he talked to them. So my question to you is, how many of those mobile cell phone chargers did Cody have to have? I mean, you have to have some insight. He had to have one in each shirt, <laughs> in each jacket pocket, one in his back pocket. His phone had to die every two hours. You, you know, I was actually speaking yesterday with his mom, uh, Melissa, and she was telling me that when he first started all of this, uh, he would take her laptop and use her laptop and then have his phone there and record and post scores and move back and forth between them. And, and you know, he was um, – there, there are so many nights where, where I will literally, you know, be posting scores, look up and just be like, how did you do this? Uh, you know, he was excellent at it. He, he, I've talked about it before that he was a genius at this social media portion of it and being able to get people engaged and being able to – get people uh you know uh, in some cases riled up and and you know he was he was excellent at it in so many aspects not just baseball I mean, he could do it for for football for high school football college football i mean the, the expansive knowledge that he had in knowing who's who what's what who's going where who's doing what you know across the nation um and and i used to tell tell the joke all the time between me and him i was like man we're we're really we're we're famous in like Kansas and, and <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> and so uh, he, he was, he was a, a genius at the social media aspect and portion of this, just absolutely excellent at it. And, and he perfected it year over year, over year, over year, just absolutely perfect. And, and, you know, uh, Connor and I often are going back and seeing how did Cody do this? What did Cody do? What did Cody post? You know, how would Cody go about this? And we're, we're really trying to get, you know, think in his shoes and, and get in that mindset. Uh, we've had, a, you know, a lot of success in social media this year, thankfully. But we're still missing the aspect of that guy, man, would, would know when a home run was going to happen and would see always seem to have his phone out at the right time. You know when he was there at a game. And by the way, by the way, uh, I would I would be hard pressed if I didn't say 
Cam Corsi, as far as Cody Butler is concerned, is the greatest Grizzly baseball player of all time. That in his oh, mind. in Cody's eyes, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Yeah, hundred percent. And Cam and, Corsi and Griffin Keller are close second. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, uh, I remember Cam Corsi that his the, the last year he was out there, uh, just tearing the cover off the ball, and and you know, uh, uh, Cody would call him you know Altuve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, he was he was fantastic, and and getting to know Cam over the years, and and even uh, to an extent, you know, his his family has has been fantastic, and seeing the the job that he's done and the work that he he continues to do in that area.